Did you know that some of the medication that you take has an effect on your jaw? Let me tell you the story of Karen. Karen had a breast cancer and she had to take a specific medication that caused osteonecrosis for her jaw. Unfortunately for her, she had to lose part of her jaw and part of her teeth. Fortunately, due to the advanced digital dentistry, uh, we were able to help her out. So let me share her story with you. My name is Dr. Robid. I'm a board certified prosthodontist and I practice in Chevy Chase, Maryland. So I have metastatic breast cancer and one of the medicines that I was on was a bone builder to help keep the cancer from progressing into the bones. But a side effect of that bone builder is osteonecrosis of the jaw. So somewhere in late 2016, I had some wisdom teeth pulled on the right side and they never seemed to quite heal. And by the end of 2018, I had really had a lot of upper right jaw pain. Essentially what had happened is the gums were receding, the bone was sticking out of my upper jaw. It was like licking a saw blade, it was pretty awful. But eventually I was able to find out that there was a surgery to take the bone and teeth out. And of course, when they took that out, there was a big hole between my mouth and my sinuses that needed to have a replacement. So that's what brought me to this point. What is a maxillary obturator? What are the fabrication steps? And what are the challenges for both the patient and the prosthodontist? Surgical removal of oral cancer often leave the patient with large defect that consists of loss of uh, bone, soft tissue, and multiple teeth. And connecting between the nasal cavity, the oral cavity, and the sinuses. Making an impression of the defect was always a challenge process that most patients did not like to the intrusive nature of our impression material and the communication of the nasal cavity and the oral cavity. Enter the digital impression, and that was a game changer for everyone. So we see the defect, and we see the impressions of Karen, and this is a digital impression uh, taken by our camera. And this technique will help us get this area, which used to be very hard to uh, obtain an impression. And we have to use gauze and multiple appointments to uh, get an accurate uh, impression of it. Uh, now with the digital impression, we were able to get a very accurate representations on what the patient had. Oh, this is so much better. <laughs> So this one fits a lot more. The other one I could really, you know, I could rock back and forth. And this one is very comfortable. It goes in smoothly. It's tighter. I would say it, it definitely restores my function. I can eat. I don't feel like there's anything that kind of that makes me trip over my tongue there. You know, there's nothing in there that makes it more difficult to speak. The first obturator that they had didn't work. And with this obturator, I think I came in once for the, the, the metal framework, and then once for the final, and, and then just the final visit. I mean, it was really easy. It fit really well, very comfortable, very fast. It was wonderful. The patient was comfortable during the process and during making the impression, and the obturator fitted well with minimum adjustment. And we were able to restore the function, prevented the food and fluid uh, from entering the nose and we were able to restore the phonetics and all that was done with minimum uh, adjustment after we delivered the prosthesis. So the advantage of digital dentistry really made a big difference in the fabrications of the obturator and made it much easier and uh, much better overall experience. So if you have any more questions about uh, the obturator and how we make them, please don't hesitate to uh, contact the office and set up a complimentary consultation.